election is tomorrow, and so we're going to take a closer look at the incoming First Lady, Melania Trump, her journey from a small town in Slovenia all the way to the White House. And Amy, I know you have much more on all this. I do. Melania Trump's rise, by the way, is perhaps most surprising to the soon-to-be First Lady herself. The journey she took to be standing next to her husband, and he is sworn in tomorrow, actually began half a world away in a tiny industrial town in Central Europe. On the eve of becoming our next First Lady of the United States, all eyes are on Melania Trump. But before there was 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or the New York City penthouse inspired by Versailles, this was Melania's home, a modest apartment building in the town of Sevnitsa in Slovenia. A rare look inside reveals humble beginnings and the start of her unconventional road to the White House. Born into communism in 1970, a young Melania Knaus, seen here, grew up spending much of her childhood on this playground and in the halls of her elementary school. It was here in Sevnitsa where she caught the eye of Slovenian fashion photographer Stane Jirko. Jirko says it's these photos that put her on the modeling map, sending her to Paris, Milan, and New York, where she met Trump at a fashion party in 1998, an encounter she described to Barbara Walters. She asked me for the number. And I said, I will not give you my number. So if you give me your numbers, I will, um, I will call you. The couple wed in 2005 at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate and welcomed son Barron a year later. While her husband crisscrossed the country in a bid for the White House, Melania stayed behind to take care of him, a decision she discussed with George last October. I keep him balanced, and I just want to have him um, out of the spotlight for now. Melania taking center stage at the Republican National Convention, where she was greeted with a standing ovation. But then widely criticized for her speech and its similarities to the one Michelle Obama gave in 2008. The 46-year-old already making history as the first foreign-born first lady since John Quincy Adams' wife, Louisa. She's only been an American citizen for 10 years. I think that that's a very interesting way of us to look at this job. She'll have different perspectives on it. And in recent decades, the role of the First Lady has changed dramatically, and only time will tell how Melania Trump leaves her own mark on the White House. For now, we know she is going to stay behind here in New York while her son Barron finishes the school year. Robin? Amy, thank you. Koki Roberts is back with us now, along with author and presidential historian <laughs> Mark Updegrove. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. You did get the memo about reading uh, my green suit degree. next time, Robin. Oh, yeah. At least next green time. Yeah, yeah. We'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We heard what Amy was talking about that Melania will spend time here in New York and also in D.C. commuting like that. Has that happened before with the no, first lady? No, that hasn't happened before, but it's a comfortable plane. Mm -hmm. And it, it probably won't take much longer than for me to get downtown from my house in the suburbs, so it, it'll be fine. And Mark, how, how have we seen the role of the of first lady change over the, over the years? You know, Eleanor Roosevelt really changed the role of First Lady irrevocably. Uh, and, and since then, uh, Lady Bird Johnson once said that there is no definition of the role of First Lady in the Constitution, but with the role comes a podium if she chooses to use it, and she did, mm -hmm. Lady Bird Johnson. And subsequent First Ladies have as well. It's expected. But, but they all have to some degree. I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt was more public and there was modern communications, but uh, Martha Washington lobbied the Congress for veterans' mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. They've all been there doing something. Way back then. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say that her husband has been a non-traditional candidate. I people, think that's safe to say. You know, <laughs> and, and, and people want to know, will she be non traditional uh, or, or, or follow along as we've seen before, make her own rules. She'll make her own rules because mm -hmm. there are no rules. This, it doesn't come with a job description, First Lady, and it also comes with a great deal of suspicion. People worry, you know, she has all that power and she can't be fired, and, and she's a woman. And uh -huh. all of that worries people. But um, but I think that she will uh, she'll find a way to find her voice in the role. It's tough for her because she's never been in politics. Mm. She's never been First Lady of a state, right. which was hard for Michelle Obama, frankly. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, she'll find her way. It's taken them all a little bit time. Right, exactly when, when right. There. Okay, that is how we perceive her publicly. Privately, what is the role of First Lady Park? The president is the commander in chief. In so many ways, the First Lady is the caretaker in chief. She takes mm. care of the family. We saw Michelle Obama take care of Sasha and Malia as mother 
Uh, but I think it's vitally important for her to take care of her son, and she's staying here in New York to provide some continuity for him before moving to Washington, and to take care of her husband, too. Uh, Nancy Reagan famously sort of monitored, her, monitored her, her husband's schedule to ensure that he wasn't being mm -hmm. overtaxed or overburdened. Uh, that's what first ladies do as well. But there's a private role of the first lady also being the only person who can tell the president yeah. the truth. And whether that's true in this marriage, who knows? That's a wife's role. It's a wife's role. Wife's role. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, Mark, Koki, I'll see you there in Washington. Right, we'll be Thanks together. So yeah, and tonight you can see an uh, inside look at America's new first family. A special edition of 2020 starts at 10 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow our nonstop live coverage of the inauguration begins at 7 a.m. Eastern right here on ABC and GMA.